All right, today what we need to talk about are the factors that affect the strength of the assets. There are several different things you need to be aware of in this course in terms of asset strength. So we're going to start by talking about the binary assets. And the main thing that affects the acid strength of the binary acids is the polarity of the bond between the hydrogen and the other atom in the acid. All right. So to cut a long story short, as the bond between the hydrogen and the other atom becomes more polar or weaker, it will be a more acidic compound. And that's what I'm trying to show here in this slide, which is from your textbook. All right. As you go from a carbon-hydrogen bond, not really polar, to a nitrogen-hydrogen bond, which is polar somewhat, to a oxygen-hydrogen bond, to a hydrogen-fluorine bond, you get more and more and more acidic as you go from left to right. So you go from being not acidic at all to somewhat acidic left to right is the basic pattern. The other basic pattern is as you go down the column, so as you go from an HF bond to an HCl bond, all right, you do tend to become more acidic. All right. So as the bond is either more polar or weaker, you have a, a stronger acid. Sound okay for the binary acids? Just a nice little pattern to help you keep that um, in mind. All right. Now we're going to spend most of our time today actually talking about the oxy acids. And what I mean by an oxy acid is that you've got an OH group, so you've got your hydroxyl group, and it's attached to another atom. Right. So they're acids that contain an oxygen. Right. So these are some generic oxy acids. XOH, here's a generic carboxylic acid. They're both oxy acids in a sense. Right. This is a classic kind of situation. Um, and these oxy acids can have several related acids in a series where they're all attached to the same kind of atom and then they alter in the number of oxygens present. So these are an important class of acids. All right. So let's look at this. We have ClOH here and we have IOH here. Now look at the electronegativity. For the chlorine, electronegativity is 3. For um, iodine, the electronegativity <coughs> is 2.5. And I've actually got the Ka values here. This is also <coughs> a figure from our textbook. The Ka for the chlorine-containing oxy acid is 3 times 10 to the negative 8. The Ka for the iodine-containing oxy acid is 2.3 times 10 to the negative 11. So if we wanted to generalize this and figure out the pattern, what might we say? electronegativity decreases of that other atom, mm -hmm. then the Ka goes down. What does that tell you about the strength of the atom, or the acid, if the Ka is getting smaller? Weaker. It's weaker. All right. So to cut a long story short, <laughs> we're going to actually have this in sentence form on the next page. becomes more electronegative, the compound becomes more acidic, acidic. We said it in the other way, but that's true too. Right. So as the central atom becomes more electronegative, the compound becomes more acidic. And so we have a, a slightly larger data set here. So we go from HClO to HBRO to HIO. As the electronegativity drops, the Ka's get significantly smaller. The next pattern is probably the most critical one for us in terms of test questions that I've seen show up. <coughs> All right, so shall we go on and talk a little more about the oxy acids? All right, 
So we have a family here, a series of oxy acids, HOCl, HClO2, HClO3, HClO4. So we're going from hypochlorous to chlorous to chloric to perchloric acid. So it all we've got the Ka values, 3 times 10 to the negative 8, 1.1 times 10 to the negative 2, and then we, if they're strong acids, what do we know about their Ka's? They're much higher. They're very large, right? Right. So, can we figure out a pattern here? What's different about these that's m perhaps leading to these changes in the Ka values? They have more than one oxygen. So, Jackie, if you were to put that together as a sentence, so what might you say? Yeah, exactly. So the more O's attached to that central atom, the stronger the acid will be. So when they've all got the same central atom, more oxygen means a stronger acid. I think that's what I actually state on the next slide. If you want to wait and copy it down <coughs> there, that's okay too. All right. So for a series of oxy acids with the same central atom, the more oxygen you have around the central atom, the greater acidity, which is exactly what Jackie just told us. It's right there in the pattern. All right. The last thing we need to talk about, so this is a really important statement, by the way. Uh, the last thing I wanted to point out about acid strength was uh, dealing with the carboxylic acids. When you're talking about the carboxylic acids, all right, they all have this functional group. Right? We have formic acid, we can have benzoic acid, we can do all kinds of things. All right? I do want to point out that the acidic hydrogen it's always this one. That's the hydrogen that would be given off in an acid-base reaction and not any of the others. Now, when this forms, when this acts as an acid, and we want to write the formula of the conjugate base, right? So the conjugate base of formic acid would be H, C, double O, what do you notice about this structure? Think back to bonding a very, very, very long time ago. Is there anything we could do with that? No. Uh, well, it doesn't seem like it has any bonding characters. All right. Ah, oh, there's a resonant structure, isn't there? So I could also draw... got resonance. And resonance, you'll remember, adds stability. So let's go on and talk about that on the next slide. All right. If I can draw resonance structures for my conjugate base, it means it's going to have more stability because of those delocalized electrons. All right. This is just for carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids, right, the organic acids. All right. So what about other organic ones that form resonance? Well, it, it, resonance in general makes it more stable. Yeah, that's okay. But in, in terms of acids and bases, if my conjugate base has resonance, that's going to stabilize the conjugate base, which makes the acid more acidic. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So because of the presence of resonance, it, that, that um, makes the base something that's a little more likely to form because it's more stable. All right. And the compound is more acidic as a result. Are we good? <laughs>